Lament is always sad, and the the setting, of course, has to be sad too. Because most laments, you know, were sung during funerals and all that. People crying after the dead one, you know. They used to be what you call keening women in Ireland years and years ago. Who used to cry at every wake 
they were specialized in crying over the dead person and telling about his good points and never his bad ones. And even at the graveyard, they used to cry till the last sod was put over the person. Now the lament, the lament, oh hon, oh hon, well that's follow through the lament I sang yesterday, the three Marys, you know. The setting of that was especially during Lent, every Friday during Lent. The gathering, or even if somebody came in off the street or from the next house who came in while this was on, they take part, sit down around and take part in it. By taking part, I mean keeping silent until the lament was over was sometimes took a long time because whoever was singing the lament put everything they had into it, and it was usually a woman. They they left nothing out, everything, and the sadness and sorrow of their own life helped them to make it even better. Mm-hmm. Would the people that were taking part become emotional? The oh, they would, most of them would, you know. They would, there was so many, especially the older people would become emotional, they'd cry because they, this is something they could see as, as, the, as, the, as the person carried down. They could see what was happening, the event taking place, which is the real meaning of song anyway, to follow a story, follow a path, mm-hmm. until you come to the turn. Does the Ochon part mean uh, Ochon means... Well, it's, it's, it's really the, the, the saddest part, Ochon. I mean, that means uh, my my sorrow, my sorrow, my sorrow, you know, mm-hmm. oh, hon, oh, hon. Would the women that um, were professional lamenters at uh, funerals, would they also use that same? Oh, oh they do. That was used at all laments. And as I said before, there were special women for this. Now, it didn't have to be related to the person. Mm-hmm. They'd come and cry over the, the, the man waked on the bed. And this with the, I did this with everybody. No, they were crying their own dead, you know. Mm. But they were using this to cry their own dead, you know, because this was part of their job. They weren't paid to do it, they just did it. They specialized in it. And what did the people in the village think about that? Um, oh, God, they got, they got great respect and great silence, and they moved a lot of people with the way they were doing it. Everybody... At the end, everybody was crying, men and women, Mm -hmm. and children. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting, the idea of having a professional cry. Oh, they did. But they're dying out now, you see. They don't. (coughs) People are not waked anymore like they used to be waked, you know. It would be three nights and three days, you know. But they had to part with the person at all, you know. So they really kept into the last minute, you know. Nowadays, of course, when somebody dies, they have them one night in the house, and the next night they're taken to church, and the next day they're buried. Mm-hmm. But that time they didn't, unless they were passing the church on the way to the graveyard. Then they put the body in the night before in the church. Now, whether they live past it or before it, they take the body there the night before burial and leave it in the church for one night. Do they ever sing <coughs> hymns or special songs um, at funeral times? No, just a lament, telling how good the person was while he was living, the good deeds he did, and all the pretty things he said, and this and that, you know. This was all in the keening. Who would sing that lament? The, the women, I'm telling you. The women specialized. There was women specialized, especially women. In Any woman, and they used to, well, it's a sort of a song, but it's a lament at the same time, telling about his good deeds. Mm-hmm. Her, his and her, or her, whichever man or a woman, praising them, lauding them to the, you know, and wishing they were still here and they'd miss them when they were gone. And it'd be a lonely house to visit anymore when so and so was gone and so on, you know. Is that the, um, same person that would sing the lament is the same that would also it, be crying? It could be, but mm-hmm. probably the person who was doing this crying would know the lament. Mm-hmm. But this was their own way of expressing their grief over the person being dead. They were crying their own dead, mm-hmm. who was gone years and years before that. And 
do you get a lot of variety in the in the laments depending on who they're sung for? Um, no, you don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. It's almost the same. Except changing. And every once somebody's dead, it's precious, you know. He's treated with great respect, even when he's dead, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is done. Do you know one of those laments? No, I don't. I don't, I don't do them. You know, mm -hmm. I don't do them. They're not done anymore. It's mostly the old women who used to do them. You know, mm -hmm. that was all. There's some things women can do that men cannot, and that's one of them. And you never even learned it. Well, I, I grew up, as I heard it often, but I never, I never, the men, as I said, the men didn't do these things. Yeah. They were keening women, they called them. Mm -hmm. Keening means crying. Mm -hmm. Keening women. Keening women. 